the piano player plays some big lush major seven voicing and you play C on top of it, you're resolving to this sound. don't know how to hear the major seven chord. I said it. Um, it's a weird thing to hear someone say. I know a lot of you have been playing for years, if not decades now. We are not training ourselves properly to hear arguably one of the most important chords we have in our vocabulary. Uh, the jazz language, major seven is a huge element to it, and we don't really know how to hear it. So I just want to dive in I'm going to start with the ear, like I always do. I'm not going to argue with theory to try and convince you of this. I'm just going to point some things out with the ear. Then we might talk about a little bit of theory to understand why this stuff is happening. And then we're going to talk about some options for actually playing over it. Okay? So we're going to discuss C major 7. If and when we get to a place where we can move it through some other keys, we will. Um, but we're going to start with C. The standard approach that all of you have probably heard before is C major 7, play a C major scale, right? Maybe if you're a little more advanced, you've heard, oh, you should avoid the 4, which is nonsense, by the way. You should avoid the 4, so make the 4 into a sharp 4, so use Lydian. Um, of course, you can use Lydian, but it's a silly idea. Like, we see the natural 4 over major chords plenty when we look at standards. So don't avoid the four, just learn how to use it. Um, the standard approach is to use the C scale, C Ionian, C major, whatever you want to call it. But there's a difference between harmony and melody. They're not the same thing. Harmony is built with notes being stacked on top of each other, moving up vertically, right? C, E, G, B. So it's like taking the C scale and thinking of it vertically. So in that scenario, obviously the C note is the root note, it's the most stable, it's the harmonic root note, C. It's the root note of C major 7. But melody functions differently than harmony. Harmony is vertical, melody moves through time. So if we talk about C major 7 being derived from the C scale, the C note is, is the root note of the chord, but when we start playing melodically through time, horizontally through time, we would expect the C note to be the most stable note available to us, right? Because it's the root note of the scale. But this is what the C note sounds like when we put it over a C major 7 chord. Here's the major 7, the B note. And that's the C note sitting on top of it. That's the root note. That's arguably what's supposed to be the most stable note that we have. That is not stable. Or I should say, harmonized properly. Um, it's very dissonant. This is the interval of a minor 9. It's an octave and a half step. Right, here's B, here's B, here's C. I'm not going to argue that I don't like this interval, or that you should never play this interval, or that it's not allowed. I'm simply pointing out that it is not the most stable sound available. It's quite unstable. So when you look at the real book, and you're playing over a major 7 chord, a C major 7, and you jump straight for C, that's the sound you're creating. Or if you're playing over a major tune and it ends and the piano player plays some big lush major 7 voicing and you play C on top of it, you're resolving to this sound. Okay? Very tense sound. Watch what happens as soon as I move this C note up to D. It's much softer, much more in. Let me get my C major 7 ringing out again. by the sound of a major 7 chord 
than the root node is. When I first realized this, when I first heard this, I didn't have a study group or a community of people to like really sit and try to understand what was happening. And it like melted my brain. For two weeks, I was questioning every piece of theory I'd ever learned. I was going back through every, you know, idea from undergrad that I learned that I figured out when I was playing professionally for 15 years after that before going to grad school. I just stopped believing everything anyone had ever told me and I went back to the drawing board and started paying closer attention because this is like music theory 101, C major 7, you play a C scale, why doesn't the C note sound stable? Like that's, it like freaked me out. My, my brain just melted, it didn't know how to handle it. Um, so let's try and find some stuff that does sound stable. Um, Miles, what's up, man? Miguel, good to see you guys. Thanks for hanging. If we look at a standard drop two voicing, you guys know I'm not a huge drop two fan, but they're good voicings to know. We see C, third fret C, and then the other three fingers are playing an E minor triad. Okay? So let's experiment with what happens if we think of this as an E minor triad. Obviously it's happening over C major 7, but we're going to think from the perspective and listen from the perspective of E minor. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of walk you through trying to learn to hear this from the perspective of harmony and melody. Harmony being C major 7, melody being E minor. Not the C major scale. The E minor triad with other notes. We're going to add other notes to it. Okay? So harmonically, Vertically, C major 7, 1, 3, 5, 7, C, E, G, B. Horizontally, melodic material moving through time, we're going to be thinking E minor. This is similar to a piano player with two hands. Right? They can play a chord in the left hand and they can solo with the right hand. They're not always doing the exact same thing, but they work together. I think my upstairs neighbor is going to enjoy listening to this class with us. every note that could be the end of the tune to me that's a way more stable sound than trying to end to did you hear C pulling down to B more stable than C is. And E is like the king here. E is the dictator. Everything keeps coming back to E because I'm giving you the sound of the E minor triad in your ear. And the organizational system of a triad is just so strong that it's taking over the melodic contour, the melodic structure. And it gives a very soulful kind of heartbreaking, regrettable sound. Regrettable? Regretful? Full of regret? That's C resolving down to B. I'm not doing anything fancy with the harmony. This is like as simple a jazz chord as we can get. Okay? Hopefully you can hear this. Uh, e is what I would call melodic do or the melodic root note. It's the most stable melody note we have sitting on top of harmony. Remember, harmony, think of it as like a vertical structure holding everything up and melody is able to sit on top of that and move across it or through it through time. There are two different structures we're thinking about, like our piano player, left hand, right hand, chord, melody, 
C major 7, E minor triad. So, assuming we like this sound, which I do, and I think it's a really good starting point to get to understand major 7 tonality, um, assuming we like this sound, where do we go from here? Uh, if you're looking at the PDF, if you haven't found the PDF yet, you can grab it from the link in the description. If you're looking at the PDF, the first row of charts, that's our E minor tension four quadratonic. So we're gonna take the triad, E minor, we're gonna add one note to it, one tension note, and that tension note is tension four. In the melodic triad's approach, this is our primary tension note for this chord, okay? E minor triad, tension four. Remember that four is not built from, it's not the four of the C chord, we're talking about the four of E minor. So E, G, B, E, G, A, B. A is the four of E minor, so we're gonna add A note to it. Can you hear A? shimmering major uh, chord that we tend to think of when we hear the word major. This doesn't sound like a major chord to me. This sounds like a minor chord, basically, because the melodic structure, right, the melodic contour is made from a minor triad. approach for a while. Um, if you've worked through any of our course material, is it in, I think it's in Forms for Life where I talk about the sharp four extension. So we have a rule in melodic triads that says that anytime we're using a minor triad for melodic purposes um, or a minor melodic triad and we're using tension four, whether it's an upper structure triad or a lower structure triad, root structure, if it's a minor triad tension four, we can add the sharp four also. The sharp four kind of connects to the natural four. And it gives us the sound of the blues. It's this. Right here's E, G, B. I didn't notate this part on the PDF sharp four, but anywhere that you see that tension note on the PDF, just go up one fret and you're on the sharp four. Right? If you see the, the different looking note on the chart, that's the tension four. Add another note one fret above it and you've got the sharp four extension. Okay. This is not full-blown E minor blues scale. Similar, we're missing one note at this point. We're missing the D note. That's a C note. Can you hear how melodically tense it is now? Hopefully, by now your ear is opening up and you can hear that. That note is where most people start and end their thinking of how to improvise over this chord, but it wants to move, it's unresolved. that's happening here is because we're thinking E minor for the melodic structure, right, moving through time with the sound of an E minor triad rather than a C major scale, when we add the four and then the sharp four, we're hearing it as a very dark, brooding, bluesy sound. Tension four against E minor is A. 
So when we add that sharp four, that bluesy note that we're all hearing is the blues. Remember I said I like to start with the ear first always and then talk about the theory of it because theory is helpful but it can actually imprison us sometimes. Most people would tell you never play the flat seven, chord tone of a flat seven over a major seven chord. It's an avoid note, right? It's not an avoid note. You just have to know how to use it. Tension four is A, so the sharp four extension. That sharp four extension is a half step above A, which is B flat. If you know your theory, B flat is the flat seven of C. So I'm using the flat seven, B flat, over a C major seven chord here, and nobody who didn't hear this conversation, nobody would have the slightest clue that I was playing the dominant seven, the flat seven, over this major seven chord, because it just sounds like the blues. So I actually think that it's easier to get away with playing the flat seven the chord tone of a flat seven over C major seven, I think it's preferable and easier than playing the root note. The C root note, yeah. If I was working one-on-one -on -one with you, like in Skype lessons, kind of coaching, doing whatever, before we even talked about getting you used to hearing the C note over C major seven, I would have you playing E minor tension four and have you learning to hear that and using the sharp four extension. So. I would recommend, as weird as it is, that you get used to the sound of the flat seven, one of the most major avoid notes we have, the flat seven over a major seven chord, before we ever discussed getting the C note, the root note into it, the harmonic root note, right? We have melodic root note and harmonic. The harmonic root note is C, the melodic root note is E. PDF is the secondary quadratonic or the secondary tension note, which is the C note. So once we can play around with that first one and we can hear it and make phrases with it, then we would say, okay, let's put that aside. Let's try E minor with tension flat six. The flat six of E minor is C, or the flat six of E, the flat six above it, a minor six above it, is the C note. So now we're going to use the, the harmonic root note but melodically it's going to behave like a tension or it's gonna to wanna to move, okay? Uh, let me just check in with you guys and see if anybody's asking any questions because I know I'm saying a lot of things that go very against what all of you have learned and what I learned for decades before my ear realized that things weren't making sense sonically. The theory all makes sense, one, three, five, seven, right? Chord scale theory, it makes sense, it's that key signature. Um, but there's still something about the C note that doesn't sit quite right. Uh, all right, Antoinette, hey, great to see you on here. I'm glad that you love the sound, thank you. Um, it's one of my favorites, and I, I hate that it took me like 20 plus years before I paid attention with my, with my own ears to listen to the thing rather than just doing what the theory books told me to do. Um, again, I'm not trashing theory, but theory is important. And there is a very important reasons to understand C major 7 from the perspective of how it relates to the C major scale. That's the whole diatonic universe we're discussing. What I'm talking about is simply how do we create the most effective melodic structure on top of it for improvising. Uh, thanks, Nick. I appreciate it. Gary, what's up, man? Good to see you. Miles, good morning. In fact, on that note, I don't think I've taken a sip yet. So we have the primary tension note, the primary quadratonic, that's E minor tension four. Then we have the secondary, which is E minor tension flat six. So it's basically E, G, B, and C. So it's the same four notes as C major seven, but you have to be very careful with this note. I usually avoid 
minor triads with tension flat sixes because it gives us a major seven arpeggio. And we really want to make sure, like you have to be very careful, this is a hot potato. It's why, I, it's one of the many reasons that it's not the primary tension note. Um, and I, we're using it as the secondary because there are no better notes. This, this would be an avoid note for quite a while, like I would normally save this note until later, but there are no other options that are better than this one, so we end up having to use this as our secondary. Um, I strongly recommend that you don't let yourself fall in the trap of just seeing this as a C major 7 arpeggio. And a good way to practice that is even when you're ascending, play the C and resolve down to B. So learn, train your ear to hear this so that you can phrase with it as a tension note. So I'm going to descend down it. I think this is the first position I have written out. Right? It sounds like you can hear now the C sounds the most stable because it sounds like a major 7 arpeggio. And there's no chord happening underneath it. Instead of playing it that way, Ascend, but every time you get to the B note, skip over it and play C first and then resolve it down to B. So that way every time you play it, you're hearing it as a flat 6 resolving down. So instead of this, G, B, C, E, play G, C. starts and ends on the seven, it moves through the root note, the harmonic root note, as though we were a tension note. Okay. As soon as you can see the shape, you shouldn't be just running the shape anyways. You should be thinking in terms of small, bite-sized phrases. seven though. And then the last tension note on that page, um, again you have to be very careful with this one. We're going to isolate it and practice each one separately, but this one I would recommend you really like don't overuse it and try not to use it um, as a standalone tension note because it sort of implies the sound of a dominant chord so we have to be a little careful here it's E minor tension flat 2 so it's E minor with an F note so it, we're almost kind of implying the sound of a G dominant we have G, F E, B, so we have the root third and seventh and a 13. So it starts to get a little bit harmonically, uh, it alters the, the emotion of the, of the tonality that we're hearing, right? It goes from sounding like we're strongly seated inside of a tonic chord to implying it's dominant, which is a little bit of a different emotion, but it can be used and it's an important note. Okay. Work on each of these three separately. All right, tension four with the sharp four extension. That's the best one. That's our primary tension note. Then tension flat six. Then tension flat two. And then put them all together. as the most stable note we have. Okay, that should be your primary goal. 
And the best way to do that is just start only with the minor triad, E minor. If you have a sustain pedal, cool. Looping pedal's cool. If not, um, you can always transpose this to the key of E. So you get the low E string. And then you have to transpose the minor triad you're using. So instead of E minor, it would be G sharp minor. just with the triad first to make sure you can hear the root note of the triad as melodic do, the melodic root note, then add tension four and sharp four, get used to that really beautiful, bluesy, dark, soulful sound, then experiment with the other tonality, uh, the other tension notes, and then put them together. Um, let your ear wrap around these sounds and your fingers figure out how to control them before you rush forward. You could play over major seven for the rest of your life just with the primary tension note and it would sound super hip. Okay. One last point I want to end on is um, just a reminder that when I talk about major seven, that's different than let's say C6. Okay. So I, I was taught when I first started studying jazz that there's only you know major seven, minor seven, and dominant seven. Like that's really it. Everything else is some variation of that. And that served me well for a long time, and I see other people talk about that idea a lot, and there is some truth to it. And if you're a beginner or early intermediate, um, it might be a good rabbit hole to go down to see how you can connect every different chord type to one of those three, uh, but it will lead you into a dead end. Like there's only, there's a, a lot of stuff that goes missing that our ear doesn't pay attention to when we're trying to simplify everything down to that. So to me, one of the things I decided to do when I was melting down for two weeks after realizing the root note, the, the chords root note C was unstable over a C major seven chord was I decided I'm just gonna treat major chords differently. I'm gonna have major seven and then I'm gonna have what I call pure major, which is like just literally a C major chord, C six, C add two, C sus two, any type of C major that does not involve the major seven I consider pure major, and they function differently. The C note works perfectly over those chords in, in terms of it being stable. Over major seven chords, like major seven, major nine, you know, major nine, sharp 11, anything that there's a seven in the harmony, in the harmonic structure, the C note is not stable. I still use it, but it's a tension note, okay? Uh, goof around with this, hit me up if you have questions, and, um, See what you can hear with it. Look for tunes where it highlights the major seven note in the melody. Right? Comes right out of the bat, Misty. Listen to that first E flat major seven chord. That is a major seven. That is not a major chord. keys, major tunes, where it doesn't land on the major seven, where it lands on the root note and emphasizes it. The, these sounds that I'm discussing, the difference between major seven and pure major, these are not theoretical ideas or philosophical viewpoints I have that I'm arguing for. I'm describing the sounds that are present inside the tunes that we all know and love already. So go look at those tunes and notice how some of them really emphasize the harmonic root note and some of them really emphasize the major seven instead, okay? Um, and then start thinking about how you might want to
comp a little bit differently if it emphasizes the major seven note versus the root note. I like to do it by relying on the on like a C6 chord instead of a major seven when it's calling for a pure major. Okay, sort of more Barry Harris method type stuff. Uh, that's it for today. We got to wrap up. I'll check and see if there's any questions and I'll write some responses. Um, thanks for hanging today. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.